Owen, newly promoted to shift foreman, was ecstatic about his night shift schedule. It meant he could finally attend his son's school events without sacrificing work. Seizing a few days off, he dove into a project he had been excited about, renovating the small apartment above his garage, creating a serene daytime retreat. As part of the project, he decided to set up internet access for the apartment. While running a cable and installing an extender in the attic to boost the Wi-Fi signal from the house, he heard unexpected noises coming from inside. Curious and confused, Owen knew that Tabitha was supposed to be at work and their son Richard was visiting her parents. No one should have been home. He moved cautiously toward the noise, which was coming from their bedroom. Settling above an old air conditioning vent that Tabitha had complained about but he hadn't removed, Owen shifted some insulation and peeked through. His heart shattered as he saw Tabitha with another man. Shocked and devastated, he couldn't tear his eyes away. After a few agonizing moments, he regained enough composure to pull out his phone and discreetly record the scene. Does your husband ever satisfy you, or is he lacking? The man asked. I've asked you not to bring up Owen, Tabitha objected, but her protests sounded weak to Owen. This isn't about him. He's a good lover and a great father. I'm sure he is, yet here I am, about to have you in his bed, and you claim to be content with him. Something does add up. I don't know why I let you convince me to do this here. Ah, right there, Mum Tabitha. We won't get caught at your place. I'm about to climax, the man groaned. Owen watched as he tensed and then rolled off Tabitha. See how thrilling it is when we take risks, Tabitha's lover remarked. Having sex at my place is good, but doing it in your marital bed takes it up a notch. Owen recognized him, Stuart Atkinson, a driver at the delivery company where they both worked. He had recently gone through a divorce and had a daughter in Richard's class. That sounds risky, Tabitha replied, her voice devoid of real emotion. You wanted to have sex in my bed, just out to Owen. It's not some kind of competition. For men, it kinda is. Atkinson chuckled softly. You're hot, but knowing you're married, and I'm with you in your husband's bed, makes me feel I have one. It's a thrill. It wouldn't be so thrilling if Owen caught us. I shouldn't have agreed to this, and it won't happen again. I'm worried about Owen finding out. It would ruin my marriage, Tabitha confessed. Let's make a deal Atkinson proposed. As long as you keep your husband in the dark, we won't do it in his bed. But once he's back in the game, we'll have to return so I can reclaim my top spot. I can't shut Owen out, he's my husband. I can't just stop having sex with him, Tabitha reasoned. He's a man and wants regular intimacy. I'll try to discourage him and limit our rendezvous in my bedroom. I dread the thought of what would happen if Owen ever caught us. Owen had parked his truck in a separate garage, hidden from view. Tabitha didn't know he was home, let alone that he was listening to her conversation. As he came down from the attic, reeling from the discovery of his wife's affair, he made a decision. He wouldn't confront Tabitha, choosing instead to focus on their son Richard, who was still in high school. Tabitha's feelings no longer mattered to him. Determined not to let a cheater enjoy the house he had lovingly renovated for 14 years, Owen planned to stay until Richard graduated. He accelerated the renovation of his apartment over the garage, transforming it into a comfortable living space with a kitchen and a bathroom. It would be his sanctuary until Richard went to college. Prioritizing Richard's college fund, Owen resolved to rebuild his own life, no longer tied by loyalty to Tabitha. By the time Tabitha got home and saw him in the kitchen, Owen was composed. You're home early. Did something happen, she asked. Observing her now, he noticed her aging and wondered why he hadn't seen these changes before. Realizing it was likely his love that had blinded him, he felt sad but knew it was her actions that had changed their relationship. Yeah, things are a bit hectic at work. They've asked me to do some night shifts for a while, starting tonight. They let me come home to pack a lunch and rest. I'll head back in later, Owen explained. They shouldn't make you work nights after a day shift, even with some time off during the day, reason Tabitha. You'll be exhausted. At least lie down and get some sleep for a few hours. Good idea, 
Owen agreed. I'll just go lie down between the sheets and wait, Tabitha interrupted loudly, remembering the condition of the bed. I just realized I need to wash the bed linens. Okay, Owen responded calmly, chuckling to himself at Tabitha's discomfort. I'll just use the bed in the guest room. No need to get worked up. Owen left home pretending to go to work, but instead watched a baseball game at a sports bar and later sneaked into his future apartment to sleep on an air mattress. The next day, he quickly hired a contractor ready to start work immediately. Owen's usual work schedule ran from Sunday to Thursday nights, leaving weekends off. Tabitha was puzzled to see him set up to sleep in the guest room on a Friday, his usual night off. Why are you sleeping in the guest room? Since we won't see much of each other during your night shifts, why not sleep in our bed? Asked Tabitha, puzzled. Since I worked last night and caught a few hours of sleep this morning, while you were at work, I'm not very tired. I plan to watch a baseball game and maybe a movie after that, Owen explained, sticking to his prepared excuse. I'm trying to adjust to staying awake at night and sleeping in the morning. I don't want to disturb your sleep unless you're up for some action, Owen suggested, wiggling his eyebrows suggestively. Tapitha's response was just as Owen had anticipated. If he hadn't overheard her conversation with her lover, he might have missed her brief deer-in-the-headlights look before she weepy smiled. I'm pretty tired tonight. Maybe we could just cuddle a bit and go to sleep, Tabitha suggested. Plus, Richard's home tonight. He might hear us. Cuddling won't do it for me, Owen replied. If closeness is off the table, I'll just sleep in the guest room to avoid temptation. He never worried about Richard hearing us before, so that's just an excuse. You don't need to make things up. I'm not the type to pressure a woman. I know that, Owen. You're right. It was a weak excuse, I'm sorry. I'm just tired and not feeling romantic. I hope you understand. Tabitha apologized. I understand more than you think. Let me know when you're in the mood. If I'm feeling it too, we might connect. Good night. Owen responded as he headed towards the guest room, leaving Tabitha with a confused expression. Sunday night, he confidently began his new role as shift foreman without mentioning his promotion to Tabitha due to her secrecy. His shift went smoothly with a welcoming team. By Monday morning, Tabitha was at work and construction had begun on his apartment. After a quick talk with the foreman, Owen managed to fall asleep despite the noise and occasional phone calls. Annoyed at forgetting to silence the landline in the guest room, Owen answered the phone brobily. Hello. Sorry for waking you up, Owen, said his mother-in-law, Beverly. I just wanted to let you know that Stuart and I heard about your night shifts and will make sure not to disturb you. If you need any help with Richard while you're sleeping, just give us a call. Owen ended the call without a word, shaking his head at people's obliviousness as he unplugged the phone. It took him a while, but he drifted back to sleep. The construction crew wrapped up their work in less than a week, leaving Owen impressed by their efficiency. Reflecting on how long it would have taken him to do the same job, he marveled at their speed. On Friday afternoon, he headed to a furniture store and ordered the essentials for his new space. A king-sized bed, a small kitchen table with four chairs, and a compact sofa. Then he visited an appliance store to pick out a large flat-screen TV, a fridge and oven, and a microwave. By Monday afternoon, his bachelor pad, as he called it, would be all set for him to move in full-time. Owen chuckled at Tabitha's puzzled expression when she returned home on Monday to find a crew working around their detached garage. She pulled him aside for an explanation. On having them finish an apartment over the garage, Owen revealed, I need a quiet space to sleep during the day without interruptions. It's going to be soundproofed and won't even have a landline. With me working nights, I figured it would be easier for everyone if I had my own space. Not knowing you're around, Tabitha echoed in surprise. But you're part of our family. We should know you're here. I'll still be around for Richard's baseball practices and games, and we'll have dinner together, Owen assured her. But I mentioned a few days ago about being available for some special time together. Are you asking me to fulfill that tonight? You're acting like a real hole. Marriage is about more than just closeness. We expect communication, 
romance, and sharing our thoughts and problems. It's not all about act, you know. Don't lecture me on marriage, warned Owen. I put effort into this marriage, just like you do. This arrangement will work fine. Just let me know when you want me in bed. I'm not some object to be serviced, snapped Tabitha. You won't be getting anything until you apologize sincerely, and I expect a nice dinner out as part of that apology you are whole. Owen grinned and walked away, leaving Tabitha puzzled. While he was making it easy to keep Stuart Atkinson away, Tabitha was worried about Owen's behavior. He wasn't his usual self and seemed to be ignoring her, which concerned her. He had always been attentive before. Deciding to give Owen a memorable night once he apologized, Tabitha was sure he wouldn't hold out much longer with that closeness. She knew he wouldn't lose interest in it. He had always been eager for it since they met. By the next Wednesday, Owen had fully settled into his new apartment. With the upcoming Labor Day weekend, he had three nights off. Richard's junior year would begin the following Tuesday. How would you both like to go to a Diamondbacks game this weekend? Owen asked at dinner on Thursday. They're playing the Dodgers and it's a big series for them. Seriously, that sounds awesome. Thanks, Dad, Richard exclaimed. I'm not a big fan of baseball, complained Tabitha. I'll pass on the game and find something to do at home. I bet you will, muttered Owen, just loud enough for Tabitha to hear. It's settled then. Richard and I will go to the Saturday night game. Wow, I got to tell Jonas about this, exclaimed Richard. He'll be so jealous. He's a huge Dodger fan and used to live in Los Angeles. Why not invite him to come along, suggested Owen. Watching baseball with friends, especially fellow fans, makes it more fun. I'll call him right now. Thanks, Dad, said Richard eagerly as he dashed off to grab his phone. You really made Richard's day, observed Tabitha. Baseball's a great way for you to bond with the boys. Cody seems like a nice kid. Wait, his real name's Cody. Owen asked incredulously. No wonder he goes by Jonas. Who names their kid Cody unless they're trying to torture him? Richard mentioned that Cody's dad passed away from a brain aneurysm two years ago, Tabitha explained, brushing off Owen's comment about the name. They moved here this summer to be closer to his grandparents who aren't doing well. I'll stick with calling him Jonas and forget I ever heard Cody, Owen declared just as Richard rushed back into the room. Jonas's mom said he can come, Richard announced excitedly. This is going to be awesome. On Saturday afternoon, Richard parked his truck outside a nice ranch house in a good neighborhood. Before he could even come to a stop, Jonas bolted out the door and hopped into the truck next to Richard. Hey, Mr. Harrington, my mom wants to meet you before we go, Jonas explained. I guess she wants to make sure you're not an offensive person or something. Sorry about that. No worries, Owen said as he got out of the truck and walked up to the door, then rang the bell. A slender woman around Owen's age opened the door. Owen noticed her legs, which he thought were her best feature. It looked strong and well-shaped running shorts. He couldn't help but admire them. Her stomach was flat and her top barely separated from her torso. Do you think my legs look good compared to everything else? Jonas's mom asked, teasing Owen. Yeah, they look great. Owen agreed, catching her playful grin. You've got some nice legs. Do you think I should let my son go to a baseball game with a guy who checks out every woman he sees? Jonas's mom challenged, trying to teach her son manners. Seeing the humor in her eyes, Owen knew she was teasing him. He decided to go along with it. What you're really asking is if you should let your son go anywhere with a guy since checking out women is part of being a guy, Owen joked with a grin. He needs to learn to appreciate women. I'll teach him what to look for. I hope he'll be more subtle during these lessons, the woman replied, still smiling. The first lesson will be to smack anyone who calls him Cody, except you, of course, Owen joked back. I see. So my son will learn to be assertive and appreciate women's legs, she remarked. Not just that, Owen replied. I'll teach him how to judge discreetly and appreciate all aspects of women, not just one. Great, thanks, Jonas's mom said, earning more respect from Owen. Have a good time, and if you're running late, make sure Jonas gives me a call. By the way, my name's Iris. Seriously. Iris? 
What do your friends call you? Avan asked. For my guy friends, I go by Ruby. My girlfriends call me Iris, she replied with a straight face. Sounds good to me. I'm Owen. Since we're going to be friends, I'll call you Ruby. I kind of like that name, Owen said. Why am I not surprised? Iris chuckled before laughing heartily. Cody can go with you anytime. I love your sense of humor. Richard is very polite, so I knew his parents would be fine. Thanks for inviting him to the game. We're big baseball fans. I used to go to as many Dodgers home games as I could. My dad even played in the minor leagues before I was born. He was pretty good, just not quite good enough. Iris added, Jonas the great kid, so it's no problem. I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he gets back home in one piece. Ruby, have a nice day. Are you serious about calling you Ruby? Iris protested. You'll always be Ruby to me. Ryan replied quickly as he walked back to the truck. Owen had a relaxing day at the game. Jonas caught a foul ball, and both boys ate too many hot dogs and drank too much soda. They fell asleep in the back seat of the truck before Owen could leave the parking lot. When they reached Jonas's home, Owen gently woke the sleepy teen and walked into the front door where Iris was waiting with a smile. He might have had a bit too much food and soda, Owen admitted. Of course he did. It's all part of a ball game, Iris replied. Thanks for taking him and bringing him back safely. It was my pleasure. Jonas the great kid Ruby Owen said, I'll see you at the boys' games. Owen found a routine that suited him well. Owen said, I'll see you at the boys' games. Owen found a routine that suited him well. He'd come home, grab a quick breakfast, and then snooze from nine to three. Thanks to extra insulation and blackout curtains, his sleep was usually deep and undisturbed. Tabitha often complained about Owen napping in his man cave during weekends, but she'd stop if he helped around the house. Owen sensed her worry about being caught by Atkinson in their bedroom, which suggested she wasn't considering divorce, aligning with his plan to stay married until Richard graduated. Owen's new foreman role was easier physically, so he bought a home gym and kept up with regular workouts. He attended all of Richard's baseball practices, eventually coaching some kids too. Jonas, initially timid but talented, flourished with Owen's extra coaching, becoming a key player by mid-season. Richard also excelled, making Owen proud. Owen noticed some moms at the games appreciated his involvement, laughing at his jokes and bringing treats, which included some for him. As Richard and Jonas's friendship grew, Owen found himself spending more time with Jonas's mom, Iris, who was witty and sharp. He considered discussing something personal with her. I hope I'm not out of line here, Ruby, but I've got to ask you something. Owen began. Almost a beak up, Iris responded quickly. What? I'm lost, Owen admitted. Well, when a guy says he's got a personal question, isn't it usually about a woman's breast size? Iris replied with a chuckle. Yeah, usually, Owen chuckled back. But in this case, I wanted to know if you've noticed some of the moms treating me differently lately. Do you think they've been friendlier? Wow, you're quite the observer, Iris retorted. You really don't know what's happening, huh? I'd need more details on the what before I could answer that, Owen pondered. I get baseball rules, like the infield fly rule, but I don't think you're talking about that, are you? Nope. I was referring to the unwritten rule of not bunting or stealing bases with a big lead, Iris quipped before getting serious. If you've been paying attention, you notice the friendliest moms are the single ones. You're a great dad, good looking, and have a decent job. That makes you a catch in their eyes, Iris reasoned. What about me being married? Wouldn't that matter? Evan asked. They thought about it, Iris replied. That's why they haven't trying to seduce you. No one's made it move, right? No one's tried. Not that it would be a problem, Owen replied. I'm married, so I'm obviously not a catch for anyone. Owen, I hate that I'm the one breaking this to you, but we're pals, so it's on me. All the moms know your wife's stepping out on you. But it gets worse. Word is she's cutting you off in the bedroom. You two aren't sharing a bed, and it's pretty clear you're headed for a breakup soon. These ladies want to scoop you up for their team once you're single. Iris's bombshell left Owen reeling. How did everyone know his private life? 
Who could be privy to his bedroom details? Then it hit him. Tabitha must have spilled the beans to that jerk about us not sleeping together, and he blabbed. Oh, fumed. Are you talking about your wife or her beau? Iris asked, trying to lighten the mood. You seem oddly calm about all this gossip. Did you suspect Tabitha was cheating? No, I never saw it coming, Owen replied. You had no inkling at all. Iris asked incredulously. I knew she was cheating, but I never suspected it, Owen clarified. I'm lost. How can you know without suspecting? Iris puzzled. It's simple. I went from clueless to certain when I caught Atkinson in bed with Tabitha. I skipped suspicion altogether. Owen explained. Well, that's a twist. You caught them in the act, yet you're still hitched and not in jail. You're not into open relationships, are you? Or some voyeur? Iris pressed, concerned. No way. That's not me, Owen assured her. I decided to change priorities. Spending quality time with Richard, being a full-time dad became my focus. Living with Tabitha, rather than splitting up, seemed best to achieve that. I started working nights, which put a damper on our bed life. I built a sweet apartment over the garage, so I could sleep during the day without hassle. She wasn't thrilled with the sleeping setup, but Atkinson made it clear that every time she slept with me, he'd demand to use our bed for their trysts. It bothered her, but not enough to stop seeing him. She's convinced her affair's a secret and wants to keep it that way. I didn't tell her, but I won't be close with her anymore. I got tested for STDs and I'm clean. I aim to keep it that way. Seriously. You heard that? I received. How could she treat you so poorly? And that guy's a total jerk. All the single moms think you'd be a real catch. I think you're overestimating my appeal. I've never been the heartthrob type. But having a solid job might make me more attractive to some desperate women, Owen suggested. Are you kidding? Look at you. You're handsome, with a beautiful smile, Iris pointed out. You're strong, kind, smart, and great with kids. If I weren't so plain and flat-chested, I might have made a move along with my barely there a cup. I think I'd better stop talking. Thanks for being straight with me about what folks are saying and thinking. Owen responded, a bit somber. I didn't realize everyone knew about my situation. It's embarrassing. Can't even keep my own wife happy. I feel like a total wimp. You're a good guy who wants to be a good dad to his son. You're tough enough to handle this crap. So you can have a solid bond with Richard. And Cody thinks you're pretty cool, Iris assured. Who? Owen asked. You must be feeling better if you're teasing me about Cody's name. Iris noted with a grin. Ruby, you're a great friend. You've kept me from sinking too deep into my own misery. I just hope Richard doesn't catch wind of this, Owen confessed. That ship has either sailed or is getting damn close, Iris disclosed. Cody says Richard knows things aren't right at home. You're mostly avoiding his mom. He's bound to pick up on something when so many people are in the know. You know what's on my mind? Harris chimed in. Cody has a crush on Heather Atkinson. It's awkward for both him and me. She's a good girl, clueless about what a jerk her dad is. I'm just relieved Richard's not chasing after Heather, Owen commented. That'd be a mess. I'll take what I can get. Cody says Richard's eyeing Holly Ingram, which isn't surprising. She's at every game cheering him on, Iris said with a grin. Yeah, I've seen her around. Nice kid. I knew her family growing up, Owen recalled. They're good people. Two nights later, Richard's team played in the district championships. Owen realized he was more nervous than Richard. It didn't help that three single moms were vying for his attention. Kelly Lane wore a revealing top, flaunting her ample cleavage. She kept leaning over in front of Owen, catching his eye. Rebecca Sparks, in a tight sweater, asked Owen about the team, her curves accentuated. Catherine Gilbert was less subtle, pressing her chest against Owen's arm. Iris smirked knowingly as she handed him snacks. Owen noticed the three women suddenly leave, then heard a familiar voice behind him. I figured I'd join my husband this afternoon to watch our son play. Didn't expect to have to navigate through so many fans to get to him, 
Tabitha remarked a bit loudly. What's happening here, Owen? The game hasn't started yet, but Richard seems solid in batting practice, Owen replied, trying to change the subject. Nice try, Tabitha retorted. Why were those women swarming around you like bees to honey? Good thing you're not allergic to silicone. If you're asking me to decipher the female mind, I'm clueless, Owen admitted. I'm even surprised to see you here. My son's in a big game. I'm here to support him. Obviously, other moms are here too. Seems like some of them are more interested in you than in the game, Tabitha replied. You've been busy lately, not making it to the games, Owen observed. How'd you manage to break free today? Tabitha glanced at Owen, wondering if he was implying something with his mention of her obligations. But she quickly dismissed the thought. If he suspected anything, he'd confront her more aggressively. Owen wouldn't just let her cheating slide. If he knew, he'd make it known. I made time. Richard's game is important. So it's important to me. Haven't seen much of you since you started the night shift, so I thought it'd be nice to spend some time together cheering for Richard, Tabitha explained. As Tabitha settled into the bleachers for her first game, she noticed unfriendly stares from some of the other moms, puzzled since she hadn't met them before. She then saw Iris, looking casual yet striking with her styled hair and shorts. The game started and Owen was fixated on the field. Richard was up to bat and hit a double, followed by Jonas, who looked stronger than last season. Jonas's hit sent the ball flying over the fence, sparking cheers as he and Richard rounded the bases. Iris beamed with pride for her son, while Owen, touched by the boy's success, had tears in his eyes, reflecting the hard work he put into coaching them. After the game, Tabitha drove to the pizza place where the team was celebrating, finding parking a distance away. She walked in to see Owen, surrounded by Kelly Lane and Rebecca Sparks, who were a bit too close for comfort. As Tabitha approached, they quickly stepped back. This scene reminded her of a recent conversation with her lover, Stuart Atkinson. Isn't it time we use your bed again? Stuart had suggested, as Tabitha was getting dressed after a romp. Getting it on in your husband's bed really gets me going. But you promised not to until Owen and I did it, Tabitha reminded him. I don't want to take the risk. Wait, are you saying you two haven't done it since we last hooked up? Stuart asked incredulously. You said you'd keep him on hold until he made a move. He's been on night shifts since then, sleeping in the garage room. You haven't even had a hug since. That's ridiculous, Stuart scoffed. He's too young, and you're too attractive for him to lose interest. Is he not straight or seeing someone else? He's definitely not gay, Tabitha insisted. He's very masculine and loyal. He's just tired from working nights and only joins us for dinner. Weekends, he's busy with yard work and stuff. Atkinson asserted, any regular guy married to someone as attractive as you would willingly go without, even with long work hours. It must be messing around. That should make it easier for us to hook up. He's getting his, I'm getting what used to be his. Owen would never cheat on me, Tabitha declared firmly. He takes our marriage vows seriously. He's not the type to sneak around and have some cheap affair. Is that what you're doing? Stuart demanded. Well, not exactly. This is just temporary. He's been busy with work and Richard's baseball, so he hasn't been paying much attention to me. I deserve a little fun. I work hard managing the house, cooking meals, and holding down a full-time job, Tabitha reasoned. We know this won't last. Stuart grinned as he pondered Tabitha's explanation. I guess you're right. Let's enjoy it while it lasts. Give me a day when I can have you in your bed. It still turns me on. As Tabitha remembered Stuart's words, she grew concerned watching the two women flirting with Owen slink away. It was clear he had some attractive women interested in him. She realized she needed to protect her marriage from those women's advances. Then she spotted Iris sitting alone. Tabitha quickly devised a plan. She put on a friendly smile and sat down beside a surprised Iris. It's nice to see you, Iris. Cody has become quite the ball player and he's such a nice kid. You must be proud of him. I am, Iris admitted cautiously. Richard is doing great too. Owen's time with them is paying off. 
He's been a wonderful mentor to Cody. Yeah, sometimes Owen is just too nice, Tabitha remarked, seizing the opportunity to make her request. You've probably noticed how those buns are always hanging around him. I was thinking maybe you could help me out. I know Owen wouldn't stray under Khalil's circumstances, but he's a man, and those women practically throw themselves at him, Tabitha explained. How do you think you could help me? Shall I spray them with cold water when they get too close? Aris joked. I can't make it to most of the games and practices because of work and other commitments, Tabitha began carefully. But I trust Owen with you. You're not his type at all. If you could just stick by him while I'm not there, I'd really appreciate it. I'm planning to suggest to Owen that he should stay closer to you and act more attentive, Tabitha continued. Those women might back off if they think he's settled on you. I know it might be awkward for you, but it's for a good cause. You could help save our marriage. Let me make sure I understand this, Iris replied incredulous. You're worried that these attractive single mothers might tempt Owen. So you want me to fill in for you at ball games and practices? You think I'm a safe choice because I'm not as flashy. I didn't mean to imply you're dull. I just know Owen. He's less likely to be swayed by you than by some busty ex-cheerleader type, Tabitha clarified. You'd be helping him stay faithful. You think cheating is unforgivable? Iris pondered. Would it be so bad if he fooled around a bit as long as you were still his priority? I hope you're kidding, Tabitha replied. I adore my husband, but cheating is a total deal-breaker for me. It shatters the marriage contract. I can't accept unfaithfulness. To me, that would mean the end of our marriage. You know how strongly I feel about this. You were married for years. I value loyalty and faithfulness. It's logical that cheating violates the marriage agreement, Iris admitted. I agree with you on that. I need to go over to Owen. Can I count on you to keep a close eye on him when I'm not around? Tabitha inquired. Absolutely, Iris answered with a smile. Make sure you explain everything to Owen. I'll do my part. Who better to keep a good man faithful than a modest, plain, unexciting woman? I might not have put it quite like that, but you summed it up pretty well. Thanks again, Tabitha said as she left to join her husband. Last night, Tabitha had a serious talk with me before I headed to work. Owen started at the next day's practice. The main point was she's concerned about the many attractive single moms around me. She thinks I'd be suffer if I stuck close to you, Ruby, or as she likes to call you, Iris. Somehow, that doesn't exactly make me feel secure. You're a clever guy. You know you were never going to be completely safe around a single woman, regardless of her top size or appearance, Iris joked. Ruby, you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever known, Owen replied sincerely. You've got it all, not just artificial enhancements. Whoa, well, you're really making my job tougher, blushed Iris. I might need to book you an eye exam after the baseball season wraps up. I've got 20 vision, and I'm usually spot on in judging people, except for one big mistake, Owen noted. Seems like I've underestimated my own wife. I reckon she might have underestimated us too, Ruby chimed in. That's if you genuinely find me appealing. Owen found amusement in the reaction of the single moms as Ruby stuck close to him. They spent a good chunk of time chatting and joking together. The moms seemed surprised, then let down. It didn't take long for Ruby to stand out from the crowd. The team had a long drive to Middleburg for their next game, so they decided to head out the day before and stay overnight at a hotel. They hoped it would help the boys stay fresh for the game. Owen gave rides to Jake Winston's folks and Minx. They talked about the team's chances on the way, filled with optimism. When they arrived, they found themselves right behind the team bus. Owen helped Ralph Winston with his luggage. Some parents, like the Winstons, volunteered to chaperone the boys and would stay at the same hotel. Others had to book elsewhere due to the busy town with multiple games. Before Richard boarded the bus, Owen told him he'd be at a different hotel and reminded him to behave for the coaches and chaperones. What hotel are you staying at, Ruby? Owen asked as they approached the team hotel. The same one as you, she answered simply. But I never mentioned which hotel I booked. How'd you find out? Owen asked, puzzled. I didn't, Ruby replied succinctly. 
How do you know we're staying at the same hotel? It's pretty crowded this weekend. You might have trouble finding your room last minute. Owen observed. I'm sure something will work out. Iris replied with a wide grin, leaving Owen puzzled. A few minutes later, Owen arrived at his hotel and suggested to Iris Ruby, want to see if you can snag a room while I check in? I can hang around to make sure you find something. Thanks, but I'll just wait here. I'll be fine, she insisted. As Owen checked in and got his room keys, he returned to his truck to find Ruby waiting. Would you like one of these cards to my room? He offered. It's room 113. What a sweet gesture, Ruby exclaimed as she accepted the key and kissed Owen on the cheek. Let's hit the hay. It's going to be a long night. The next morning, Owen felt more tired than when he hit the sack. Initially, he struggled with breaking his marriage vows, but Ruby helped him see it differently. Let's think this through. Tabitha not only cheated, but she's cut you off. Even if she hadn't, she's risking your health with unprotected act. Basically, she's made being close with her unsafe and unappealing. She's released you from your vows and marriage contract. I've been celibate for over two years. I'm clean after regular checkups. You got tested after finding out she cheated, and you're clean. I even started birth control over a month ago, hoping we could be together. Can you give me one reason we shouldn't be together? Is it my looks? Your wife figured I was a good fit against all those busty women because she knew you wouldn't be into me. Am I just not attractive enough? Ruby, you're incredibly attractive. Don't doubt that for a second. I've never strayed from Tabitha, and it's a mental shift. But you've made a solid case for us being together. I'm all in, Owen declared with a grin. Before we go any further, there's something you should know, Ruby responded. Both my parents are in hospice care and likely won't be around much longer. My brother's been sending game tapes of Cody to his friend who happens to be the baseball coach at a top prep school in Los Angeles. If Cody gets a baseball scholarship next year, we might move back there. I really like you, but we're not talking about a long-term thing here. It just wouldn't work out. Look at us. You're a good-looking married guy with a cheating spouse. I'm just a regular woman with a son who might have a shot at a sports scholarship. I have to do what's best for Cody, she explained. That's fantastic news about Jonas, Owen said proudly. He's a great kid and a talented player. I'm happy he'll have a chance to improve his game against tough competition and get a good education. You're a big part of why he's getting attention from better schools. I've seen the effort you've put in with him. It's funny how you being a mentor to my son is giving us the chance to move back to Los Angeles and away from you. I'm not sure I'd be good at a one-night stand kind of thing, Owen admitted. Maybe it's better to just skip closeness altogether than have a one-night fling and go back to celibacy. You're being silly. I mentioned we might move back to Los Angeles in six months for the school year. That's a long time away. A guy can have plenty of fun in six months unless he's too old for a regular dose of steamy action with a very eager woman. We'll just have to see about that. Will you live up to your nickname, Ruby? Owen teased. I'll do my best for you, big boy, Ruby promised. Whenever you want me, just whistle, and I'll teach you how to whistle. I've always been told I'm a pretty good whistler, Owen joked. Then you're definitely not doing it right. Iris shot back. The baseball team ended up winning the state championship and Jonas, got a scholarship to a top California prep school. Sadly, both of Iris' parents passed away before Thanksgiving, within a week of each other. Owen and Richard attended their funerals, where Owen got to meet Iris' brother Dexter and immediately hit it off with him. Owen, this is my brother, Dexter, Iris introduced. Dexter, meet Owen, who's been a mentor to Cody and a good friend to us. Wow, exclaimed Owen. Your name's Dexter. That's right, agreed Iris' brother. But everyone else calls me Grim. Only Iris and our parents ever call me Dexter. So what do you call my sister? I call her Ruby, but it's a long story, Owen said. I don't think I need to ask, Grim chuckled. Owen spent Thanksgiving with Tabitha and Richard at her parents' place. For the first time in a while, Owen found himself getting ready for bed with Tabitha. They always stayed over on Thanksgiving night, 
and Owen couldn't come up with a good reason to break that tradition. It's been ages since we've been together, Tabitha murmured. You must be in need of some affection by now. Make love to me. Owen felt a pang of guilt at his next words. So, you're finally admitting you need some attention. I knew you'd come around. I'll be happy to take care of you and put a smile on your face for the holiday. You heartless jerk. With that attitude, you won't be getting any action for a long time. Tabitha snapped. What's gotten into you? Just forget about touching me. Fine. Owen replied simply as he turned away from Tabitha. It wasn't like him to say something so harsh, but it did the job of avoiding closeness with Tabitha. Still, Owen couldn't shake the regret over how far his marriage had fallen. Tabitha felt uneasy after Owen's sharp remark, which made it hard for her to fall asleep. As she lay beside him, she pondered whether he was upset because they hadn't been intimate lately, or if he somehow knew about her affair. She realized she needed to have a serious conversation with Stuart. She couldn't keep denying her own closeness, especially after her slip up about having acted with him in their marital bed, which could raise suspicions and harm their marriage. Owen had a set routine for his night shift. He'd come home, grab a light breakfast, and hit the bed by 9 a.m. often. He'd wake up around 2 p.m. to find Ruby joining him in bed. They'd spend an hour together before she'd head home to be there when Jonas got back from school. With baseball season over, Owen could focus on being fresh and ready when Richard returned from school, after which he'd usually catch a quick nap before heading to work. Overall, the arrangement worked well for both Owen and Ruby. One evening in early December, Richard called his dad Owen shortly after starting his shift at work. Dad Jonas and I are hanging out with Heather and Holly in Heather's car. You said we could stay out until midnight since there's no school tomorrow. We've hit a snag. Heather was driving her mom's car, and we've got a flat tire with no spare in the trunk. We're stuck on D Street, and I'm getting a bit worried. I see a few guys by the arcade looking over this way. You're stranded on D Street by the arcade? Dang it, cursed Owen. We'll talk about this later. Is Heather driving that Corolla? Yeah, Richard replied quickly. I'll grab a wheel and tire that fits and head over. Keep your doors locked and call the cops if you run into trouble. Take care of those girls. Owen put his phone away and headed to the production floor. He spotted Gus, who drove a Corolla. Gus, you still have that Corolla, right? Owen asked the bearded man operating a forklift. I need a tire that fits your car, and I need it now. While talking to Gus, Owen saw Jack Reynolds passing by. Jack was Holly's uncle and his sister was Holly's mother. Jack, my son and some friends are stuck on D Street with a flat tire and no spare. Holly's with them. I'm getting a tire from Gus and heading over. Could you come with us? I've got a proper spare, not one of those flimsy donuts, Gus said firmly. Let's take my car and get there fast. With Jack, Gus and Owen on their way, they were worried about the kids being in that part of town late at night. It wasn't a safe area, especially for teenage girls. Tabitha lay in bed, feeling the warmth from her time with Stuart. His phone rang, and he saw it was Heather calling. Ah, dang it, it's Heather. I got to pick it up, or she'll keep bugging me, Stuart said, checking the caller ID. Tabitha only caught Stuart's side of the conversation, but was curious about what she heard. Why are you all down there? Well... That's unfortunate. Those boys should be able to handle a small problem like that. It's not my fault your mom doesn't keep a spare tire. What was that about? Tabitha asked once Stuart hung up. Nothing to fret over, Stuart replied, reaching over to touch Tabitha's chest. As Owen and his pals pulled up behind Heather's car, they spotted some tough-looking guys nearby. Owen got out, grabbed the tools from Gus's trunk and Gus brought the spare tire. Jack signaled Heather to lower her window. You guys stay put till we fix the tire. If those jerks cause any trouble, we'll handle it. And Holly, you'll need to explain to your mom while you're here on D Street, Jack said. Owen positioned the Jack under the flat tire, cranking it tight, then moved to loosen the love nuts. The leader of the tough guys approached Jack, claiming it was their turf. Before Jack could respond, 
Owen swung the tire iron, hitting the guy's shines. He dropped to his knees, cursing, while Owen sat on him to keep loosening the nuts. The two closest gang members hurried over, looking like they wanted to help their fallen leader. Jack swiftly hit the first one in the head, knocking him down instantly. Gus moved forward, causing the second guy to retreat out of his reach. Raise the car a bit, and I'll take off this tire, Owen told Jack calmly. Jack cranked up the car, while the gang members shouted insults and curses. Occasionally, the guy under Owen would try to move, but Owen would grab his hair, lift his head slightly, and push it back down onto the ground. After two tries, the guy decided to stay put. Owen removed the lug nuts and took off the flat tire. Gus handed him the good tire and he put it on. After hand tightening all the nuts, Jack lowered the car. They seemed to ignore the taunts from the tufts as they worked. Owen tightened the nuts and stood up, accidentally kicking the leader in the groin as he stepped over him. You guys got something to say? Owen asked as he walked toward the gang, twirling the tire iron casually. As he approached, the group scattered. Get out of here, you kids, Jack shouted, backing the gang away from the car. Watch out, you don't run over those fools lying in the street and stay away from this area. The three men got back into Gus's car and followed Heather's car as she drove towards the kids' neighborhood. I can't believe you whacked that fool in the shins, Gus chuckled. He went down like a ton of bricks. Thanks for coming along, Jack said. My hand hurts, but it felt good to knock that punk on the head. Geez, you really sat on that guy while fixing the tire, laughed Gus. That was a blast to watch. The men continued to laugh and talk about their adventure as they went back to work. By morning, the whole plant had heard the story. Stories of bravery and excitement were always a hit, especially during the night shift. They helped pass the time and took everyone's minds off their tiredness. The next afternoon, Owen woke up to Ruby jumping into bed and kissing him passionately. She was without clothes and clearly excited. Cody filled me in on what happened last night. You were amazing. Thanks for looking out for the kids like that, gushed Ruby. You're in for a treat. I would have come sooner, but I had to wait for Cody and Richard to go see the girls since they're off school today. Meanwhile, Tabitha had just started her shift when Sue Blaine approached her at the water cooler, looking like she had something to say. I heard about how Owen, Jack Reynolds, and Gus Benson handled those troublemakers by the kid's car on D Street. A good whack with a tire iron puts those punks in their place pretty quick, Sue said. Tabitha quickly connected the dots. Last night, Heather had called her dad for help, and he had brushed her off. Apparently, the situation was more serious than Stuart had let on. Since Sue mentioned kids, it likely involved Holly, along with Cody and Tabitha's son Richard. I'm interested in what you heard, Tabitha replied. I want to see if the rumors match up. As Sue recounted the rumors, Tabitha grew angry with Stuart Atkinson, though she didn't show it to Sue. His daughter had reached out to him in a dangerous situation, and he had ignored her. Owen, along with Gus and Holly's uncle Jack, had stepped up like real men. They protected the kids and got them out of harm's way. Discovering that she was involved with the man who wouldn't assist his own daughter and her friends, including Richard, deeply hurt her. She wondered how far she had fallen, including Tim, deeply hurt her. She wondered how far she had fallen. Owen's character outshone Stuart's by tenfold. Tabitha had always known this, which made her question why she got involved with such a selfish guy. In the break room that afternoon, Tabitha found Stuart alone, snacking while his delivery truck was getting fixed. She didn't hold back. Heather reached out for your help last night and you brushed her off. Those kids could have been in real trouble and you just said to call. What kind of dad does that? It turned out fine, Stuart said casually. Your husband and his pals sorted it, so what's the issue? Owen acted like a real man. You abandoned your own daughter, that's the problem. My son was with them. If your lame husband is so great, why am I the one getting close to you while he's been out of luck for months? Stuart chuckled. But no matter how he tries, he can't measure up to me. You are whole. Being a man isn't about size, 
Tabitha retorted. It's more of a man than you'll ever be. You say that, but last night you had love with me. In my view, I've outdone that wimp in every way that counts, responded Stuart casually as he took another sip of his soda. That's it, declared Tabitha firmly. We're done. Don't even try to talk to me again. I want no part of you. Whatever, Stuart responded calmly. Plenty of married women out there would love a guy like me. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. I'd still be willing to be intimate with you if you ask nicely. Tabitha burst into tears and hurried out of the room. She had cheated on her husband, disrespected him, and jeopardized her marriage and family for a shallow, self-centered person. She only hoped Owen would never find out how foolish she had been. With that realization, she knew she had a lot of amends to make. Ruby had just brought Owen to a satisfying finish when she heard sniffles behind her. Surprised, Ruby turned around to see Tabitha watching her, tears streaming down her face. How could you do this to me? sobbed Tabitha. I trusted you both, and now this? I'm just following your orders, Ruby replied calmly, sipping on her clothes after silencing Owen with a gesture. You wanted me to keep those busty buns away from Owen. I sacrificed myself to meet your goals. I didn't want you to sleep with him and you know it. Tabitha shot back, her tears turning into anger. I can't believe Owen would cheat on me like this, especially with some skinny girl. I understand it's tough to hear that Owen and I are intimate, but there's no need to be rude, Ruby reasoned. Your husband was ready to burst. I'm just helping him release the tension he's been feeling. Stuart Atkinson didn't want you to have closeness with your husband, so Owen had to turn to someone else. Luckily, I was there at the right time. You should be grateful I've helped you cut off Owen completely and kept Stuart satisfied. Speaking of Stuart, where is he? Is he with you in bed? You know about Stuart? Tabitha exclaimed. Well, yeah, Ruby replied. I think almost everyone knows about Stuart. You've been seeing him for months. He promised to do it with you in your own bed every time you slept with Owen. So you stopped being close with your husband. Luckily, Stuart filled that gap, pun intended. If Owen knew, why didn't he say anything? Why did he let Stuart and me continue for so long? Tabitha asked, tears still flowing down her cheeks. You're sharp. What do most guys do when they find out their wife's been cheating? He'd probably get real mad and yell at me. Then he'd likely divorce me, Tabitha said, as she faced the harsh truth. That sounds about right. So what happens next? Would Owen and Richard stick around while you move in with Stuart? Ruby asked calmly. I'm not leaving my home. Richard stays with me. If Owen wants out, he's the one who has to go. He'd have to pay alimony and child support. Tabitha concluded firmly. That's pretty much what Owen figured would go down. He wanted to stay close to Richard and be the best dad he could. How could he make that happen? Ruby probed. By not spitting up, Tabitha murmured. He stuck around for Richard, not for me. When he found out about Stuart and me, he mentally checked out of our marriage. We've been living like we're divorced for ages, haven't we? I was just too blind to see it. In your defense, you had Stuart clad in your vision, making it hard to see your husband had already left emotionally. I'm just the girl who came along after you messed everything up. I helped Owen heal, Ruby explained. I broke it off with Stuart. I never want to see him again, Tabitha declared. That was after he ditched his daughter in a tight spot last night, right? You didn't have much choice, Ruby remarked. Even cheaters have their limits. Are you and Owen moving in together now? Tabitha asked, wiping away her tears. We're pretty comfortable with things as they are. Cody and I are heading back to Los Angeles before school starts. I'd rather he doesn't find out his mom's dating his best friend's dad if I can help it. When it's time for me to leave, I might help Owen find someone new if he wants, Ruby revealed. You see, I didn't steal your man like those other moms wanted. We're just spending time together for now, kind of like you and that jerk were. What if I put a stop to this? He's my husband. You can't sleep with him, Tabitha protested, her voice trembling. You gave me that right when you got with Stuart Atkinson, Ruby retorted sharply. 
that pretty much freed Owen from any obligations to you. He and I are committed to each other. We trust each other, believe it or not. Owen's been told he can't be with you or anyone else if he wants to be with me. Ruby added, her tone unyielding. Who knows who else Stuart Atkinson's been with or what diseases he might have. You can have all kinds of nasty stuff in there. Tabitha's eyes welled up with tears as she thought about Ruby's words. Could Stuart have been cheating with someone else? She knew what kind of man Stuart was now, and the realization hit her hard. She needed to get tested soon. So, what now? Tabitha asked nervously, her voice barely above a whisper. Let's keep things as they are. I'll keep visiting Owen, and you keep avoiding him. It's working fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ruby replied with a smug smile. I won't do that, Tabitha said firmly, trying to summon her strength. You're leaving soon. I'll stick around and show Owen what a great wife I can be. He won't need you. Except he knows I'm faithful while you're out there, ready for anyone, Ruby argued, her eyes flashing. Basically, I control your sex life, at least with Owen. I won't let him near your dirty business while he's with me. I won't risk diseases, and he's not into it either. One thing I've learned, all big too late, is there's more to a relationship than just sex, Tabitha said with false confidence, her voice wavering. Sex without love or commitment is pretty demeaning. I'll do what a wife should do for her husband while you just give him sex. Think about that. All right, Ruby responded coolly. Let's do it. You cook for him, clean the house, and do his laundry. I'll take care of him in bed. We'll see who's happier. Aaron, I'm so sorry for disrespecting you. Can you forgive me? Tabitha pleaded, her heart breaking. How could he trust you again? Ruby interjected harshly. He might forgive you someday, but regaining his trust. That's the real challenge for cheaters. Enjoy the next few months while you're still his wife in name. Realize what you lost for some stranger and learn from it, Ruby advised. Owen doesn't want to break up the family while Richard's in school. You've got about nine months after I leave to try to win him back. Once Richard graduates, Owen might kick you to the curb. Why are you speaking for Owen? Tabitha demanded, her anger flaring. I'm not just his lover. I'm his best friend, Ruby explained. While you were with Stuart, Owen, and I had our own talks. I promised to handle this situation when it came up. He promised to reward me once I did. Can you leave us alone now?